Hello, my name's Tom and welcome back to my channel where I talk a little bit about theatre, a little bit about being a PhD student and a little bit about those two things taped together. Today, another episode of What the Theory in which we're looking at semiotics. Now, I've had a few people ask me in the comments to some of my other videos to talk a little bit about the, some concepts surrounding postmodernism, maybe do some What the Theory videos around those. It's certainly a term which is quite often misunderstood and misused in popular discourse. However, I thought it may be a little bit presumptuous to try and jump straight in with postmodernism and poststructuralism before we have a real understanding of what modernism and structuralism might be. So today we're going to begin that journey towards maybe looking at postmodernism by having a little look uh, at semiotics. I'm always really keen to respond to uh, suggestions and comments that people leave so if you have anything you particularly like me to do about the theory video about then please do let me know down below and if you'd like to see those then please do um, click on that subscribe button wherever that is. So here we go with another episode of What the Theory. <laughs> Semiotics is in short the study of signs, and in the humanities, like those things that stand by the sides of roads, we use the term sign to talk about something which stands in for something else. Examples of signs are many and multitude. For example, we might describe words as being signs, because when I write down the word dog and show it to you, it allows me to communicate the idea of a dog to you without me having to go out, find a dog and show it to you and point to it. A picture of a dog, whether a crude hand-drawn image on a piece of paper or a very realistic photograph is also a sign because it's evoking the idea of a dog without them actually being a dog present. We could also describe physical actions as being signs. So for example, if I was to use my years of experience in the theatre to mine being a dog by barking and maybe sticking out my tongue, we could also describe that as a sign. And it doesn't just work for concrete nouns but abstract ones too. If I were to try and describe the complex feelings of anger that build up in me every time I see you, I might use the words I hate you to describe that either by saying them or writing them down on paper. As such, I'm able to describe to you those feelings that I'm feeling without having to make sure you're feeling them as well, although you might if I say that I hate you. Me throwing a punch at you could also be quite a clear sign that I hate you as well. Finally, we can also point to some examples of signs which exist in nature. For example, if we see smoke rising from a forest, it's a pretty good sign that there is some fire happening within that forest somewhere. Likewise, if there's puddles on the floor, that's a pretty clear sign that it has been raining. Now, the granddaddy of modern semiotics is Ferdinand de Saussure, who in 1916 had a volume of work posthumously published called The Course in General Linguistics. In it, he introduces this concept of the sign and suggests that it has two elements to it, the signifier and the signified. So the signifier is the thing that does the standing in for something else. The word dog, either written down or said, for example, the words I hate you or that punch which I'm definitely not going to throw at you. By the way, depending on who is watching this, I probably don't actually hate you. I'm not even really sure why I chose hate as an example there. The signified is the thing or idea that the person trying to communicate is trying to evoke. So for example, a four-legged animal which wags its tail and barks, which we often call a dog, or that complex a mixture of emotions that we commonly describe as hate. Now this may seem very very pedantic but Saussure lays it out in writing in order to communicate the idea that there's often no inherent link between the signifier and the signified. Saussure was primarily a linguist and so he was interested in how the use of the letters d-o-g to mean dog don't actually have any natural link to that animal other than the fact that as a society, we have decided that the, when we put the letters D, O and G and the sound dog together, that that's what it will mean. Saussure is also very keen on this idea that when I use the word dog, I'm not referring to a specific dog, but to more the concept of dogginess. Even when I'm trying to explain to you what kind of animal my new pet Fido is, I'm actually trying to communicate you the idea of dogginess in order to describe what animal that is, rather than to evoke the idea of my specific dog, Fido. 
Now many of Saussure's ideas of semiotics are very bound up in looking at linguistics, and so the American semiotician Charles Sanders Peirce looked to develop these ideas further, particularly to how we can look to use these concepts outside of written or spoken language. So, rather than suggesting that the signifier never has a link to the signified, which, once we begin to look beyond language, becomes slightly more contestable, Pierce suggested that there is actually a number of different ways in which signifiers sometimes link to signifieds. Although later in his career he was to expand upon these greatly and then also retract that expansion, Pierce puts out that there are mainly three different kinds of sign, an icon, an index and a symbol. An icon is anything with a physical resemblance to the idea or thing that it's trying to evoke. My drawing of a dog, for example, or photograph of a dog, has an inherent link to a dog itself, as it physically resembles that thing. An index is a sign which has a link to the thing that is being evoked by direct relation. So to look back at my earlier examples of smoke coming from fire and puddles coming from rain, both of those are good examples of index indexes, because we know that there is a causal link between the presence of puddles or rising smoke and fire and rain. We can also use the term index to describe signs which require a direct link in order to make complete sense. The word me, for example, doesn't mean an awful lot until we know who's saying it. When I say the word me, it means something different to when you say the word me. Finally, we have a symbol. A symbol is something which has no relation between the signifier and signified, other than the fact that we have decided as a society that those two things should be linked. Language is a great example of this. For example, if there was some text in front of me in Mandarin, I wouldn't be able to understand it without having the existing context of what each of those characters means. Another example which is often used to explain symbols is that of traffic lights. There's no inherent link between the idea of red and the fact that we should stop and the colour green and the fact that we should go, other than as a society over many, many years we've decided that they should mean that. At first glance, semiotics can feel a little bit like theorising for theorising's sake. It can feel like we're taking something relatively obvious and making it academic just for the sake of sounding clever. Whenever we're examining society and culture, Culture, however, we're primarily looking at things which are standing in for something else, and we're also often looking at that idea of how we communicate. And so understanding how meaning is made through communication is really important, and being able to distinguish between what signs and what meanings have a direct link to the thing they're referring to, and which are purely socially constructed, becomes a really useful concept. Particularly with those signs which don't have an inherent link to the thing which they're referring to, there's often a deep politics to why one thing might come to mean another, as well as the fact that in an increasingly mediated age, we often see a growing gap between a sign and the thing that it's referring to. And by extension, this leads to an increasing number of possible ways of decoding the same sign, depending on what culture we were brought up in or what our specific context is. Understanding signs, then, is fundamental for understanding how and why meaning gets made the way it does. Thank you very much for watching this episode of What The Theory. I hope it's been an interesting and useful uh, introduction to ideas around semiotics. I would suggest going away and doing some reading as well. I did some simplification when I was looking at the words of Charles Sanders Peirce and using some of the terminology with, from Saussure. So I'd look there if you're looking to use the specific language that Charles Sanders Peirce uses. Um, but thank you very much for watching once again. Uh, if you have enjoyed, then please do consider giving the video um, a big thumbs up. That would be wonderful. And I will see you soon with another episode of What The Theory.